For us, Cronio, four months ago, we were in the same studio and you were telling us uh, with quite a lot of optimism for South Africa post-2024, lots of people got excited about it. We all need hope. Yeah. Are you going to give me hope today or are you going to say, oh, maybe I was a bit early? No, 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 not early. Same argument. Same, same argument. Ideas. Hasn't, uh -huh. hasn't shifted, no. So the, the, the Social Research Foundation, which yeah. uh, you're with now, the name tells us research. Yeah. Uh, you do a lot of research. Yeah. What's, what are you discovering now from the people you're talking to? Well, look, the rule on these things always is there go the people, and as their leader, we will follow them. That's how change happens in a society. Explain that. Well, there's, if it's, let's take the present. You go to places, there's this sort of wailing. Someone must do something. There's, you know, will business lead us out of this? Ramaphosa is not leading us out of that. Is the, will the opposition lead us out of this? Will Herman Mashaba lead us out of this? Uh, diplomats that do the same thing. Um, it's, 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 it misses the point. South Africa's people have passed an inflection point where their political opinions have broken sufficiently fast that they are the reform movement in the country and they are bringing about a new administration. It can't be stopped. The data is unambiguous. Tell me. The, the ANC is, has lost its majority. In, in urban centres, if only urban people voted, the ANC is at 30%. It's rural vote still very strong, and that, but that's logical because it's an older population with living memory experience of growing up as a black person under apartheid in a rural community. And today, in the relative sense of things, is, is, is much better experience than that. But even that urban vote, that, that rural vote of the ANC is going to tail away at the country's mortality right now. So it's done, and people have brought about... But bring in the rural vote, where does the ANC stand then? About 70%, 80%, or with the EFF together, they'll sit at 70 to 80. But it's an older voter... But total, in total? In total, if you take, total, if you take uh, both together, it uh, depends on the day of the week, 45%. So below 50? Below 50, oh yes. That's yes. the critical thing. Everyone's getting them below 50 now. ANC, uh, but then EFF? Uh, EFF 12 at the moment. So together they, yeah. they're over 50. We talk about whether that's a deal but that I, works I, or not. I think it's real important, yeah. given that the ANC is at 40, and they know. The guys yeah. in the ANC must know this. Oh, they do, yes. Is there not now an incentive to rig 2024, to rig the elections in 2024, especially in the rural areas where maybe the focus on Free and yeah. fair is not quite as strong yeah. as it I, would I think be. there are people who have that incentive and the ability to try and do it. But I don't think they'll succeed because the forces against them are so strong. The economic and the social pressures that explain why ANC support is sitting in an election at 45. It peaked at almost 70% in 2004 a decade in, and it's falling really fast. There's a thing called the Direction of Travel Indicator for South Africa, and that measures the net result between people who feel the country's uh, coming right and those who feel that it's going wrong. So you take the positives and the negatives, you subtract them from each other, and you get a score. After um, Ramaphosa became leader of the ANC, the score sat at about negative 40. It's just a benchmark, just... Got it earlier this year at, at negative 72. It's collapsing. And it's a lead indicator of public opinion. Mr. Ramaphosa himself has a score, popularity score. You can do that in various ways. But immediately in, in, the, in let's say, the 24 months after becoming ANC leader, he sat at about 60, but it's just a, a relative thing. Um, he has now fallen below 50 for the first time. So the spell has been broken, the Ramaphosa spell. Ramaphoria. It's, it's not holding anymore. No, mm. it's broken. Now, he was, at the time of the 2019 election, 10 points stronger than his party was. Because he, his popularity was, was, was in the high 60s. The party got 57 in that national vote. Um, and this is, this is extremely important. There's been some sort of wargaming, you can call it that, in, in testing opinion. So you sort of put it to people, if, if Mr. Ramaphosa wasn't around anymore, you know, just 
think through this? Would you, how, how would you then vote in an election? And um, the RET guys, if they went off on their own and did their own thing, would do very, very badly in such an election, below 20 uh, percent, most likely. Um, so you boot Ramaphosa and the RETs take over, you don't have a solution. Mr Ramaphosa, because there has been no substantive reform, the spell is broken and the direction of travel indicator is sinking. Wherever you, you, you look at this, um, the current administration has boxed itself in now to a point where it is going to lose. And it's going to lose because ordinary people have brought that result about. They have given up long before business and diplomats have given up on the offering that the ANC made to the country politically. Now, that is an incredibly important moment for us. To Watershed see moment. Watershed. It does, the first thing it does is, is this is an idea of, 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 of James Myberg, uh, who runs the Politics Web website, that we escape the risk of national suicide. Yes. National suicide is what happens when you have one dominant actor that can decide what happens to the society under pressure. So you get Venezuela, you get Zimbabwe and, and all of that. We're going to escape that risk to a significant extent as this, 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 the, these forces continue to pull the ANC deeper and deeper down. And you mustn't understate how far it could go. There are good ANC guys around who sort of say in quiet corners, you know, how far can this thing fall if these trends continue? And if you present a compelling alternative, it, it can fall extremely fast and, and extremely far. So you escape the national suicide uh, risk. And, and, you know, pe people always kind of take the baseline of the present as the worst thing that could ever have happened. But they don't realise much yeah. worse things could have happened. So we escape that. Second thing is we're going to have to make a deal. And that might happen about 500 days from now in the next election. And, and if for some reason the, the opposition does terribly badly and... ANC does terribly well, and if you if you really try and you you make everything just go right for the ANC and the lights are on and 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 you roll out a bit more welfare, maybe and the opposition's completely useless, maybe they can kind of cling to 50 percent one more time. But 2029 can't. There's no chance. So we're going to have to make a deal, and um, that is the opportunity to seize now. What deal do we make? And the, the, the options are varied and many. Um, the the uh, smaller parties can coalesce around something like the DA. The DA and the ANC can come together in, in some sort of a, a conflagration. I'd um, like to, to explore the, that in some detail yes. with you, but almost in two steps. Let's start with step one, which is next month. We have the elective conference for the ANC. Ramaphosa stands for re-election. He is being challenged by William Kesey. Is it a one-horse race? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Because R.W. Right? Johnson, when I spoke to him last week, said, it's not an election, it's an auction. It depends who's got the yeah. deepest pockets. Yeah. One of my insiders in the party says, the current auction is at 50,000 rand per month per delegate for the next five years yeah. with taxpayers' money. Yeah. Now, how can we, as a nation, accept it? If that is given, that that is... R.W. Johnson, I don't think, would have made it up. Certainly, my insider hasn't made it up either. How can we, as a nation, accept that something like this can happen? Or how can even ANC members accept that they're going to an elective conference where they're buying votes? Well, they don't accept it. The nation doesn't. That's why they, ANC's losing because of this sort of thing. And it's that very point, the auction, that makes it hard to call the result. You know, even, even last time around, you could get hold of the branch data and you could, you could look at the standings and you could draw some inferences and you could kind of judge where the result would, would end. Um, this time doesn't help if you have the data because you don't know to what extent the, the corruption has, has permeated the delegate who will vote. And there's, there's another thing too, even if the corruption is there, there's a little moment when the grip is released, when the person walks into that box to vote. Secret ballot. For a few seconds, yeah. They have an opportunity to think through what they're going to do. 
But let's say it goes wrong, and uh, 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 I mean, I don't know what wrong would mean. Does it mean you you, well, use you elect the same? Okay, mm-hmm. let let's say you 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 return Mr. Ramaphosa and his administration. Um, this is an administration that's taken the ANC to below fifty percent for the first time, and and that will continue. The second option is, let's say, you get someone else in, uh, let's say, the sort of more radical types. I don't, that that also doesn't really work, though, Alec, because no one... The, remember the Zuma caucus in Parliament voted against expropriation without compensation. No one championed that policy harder than Mr Ramaphosa himself. So the idea that there, there's, this, there's this clear reform faction and this clear mm. other faction doesn't... It's not actually real, but, but but let's pretend for a moment it is. The RET type faction wins. There's no way they can lead the ANC to any success in a in a future election. So the point for me, or what I, I say to um, people who ask me, is is regardless of what the result is, the downward continues. Mm-hmm. Then people say to me, ah, but we're still going to sink as a country because the EFF and the ANC are going to hook up together and destroy things. And, and the risk is very, very serious if that happens. But the EFF guys are, are sharp and they see this plummeting ANC shedding support all over the place. They're really going to weld themselves to it. Because if they do, it might be a good result for the country because you box them up together and they get wiped out in the next election. To prevent that, they would have to destroy the constitutional edifice, the Bill of Rights and the Rule of Law in five years. And and you've got to be very, very ruthless and efficient to do that. Well, they won't have two-thirds majority. Yeah, they don't, they're not anyway. going to have that majority. I mean, they'd have to do it through a reign of terror. If they fail, we knock them out, and then uh, you, you, you kind of eliminate all the radical factions. Inside the ANC, if you're at 45 or 40, you're going to do what? You're going to invite the most uh, ferocious political actors the country's ever created to become your colleagues. Inside the ANC, the more pragmatic, it's always relative, say so this will be a reverse takeover of our party. And in fact, it is quite likely that in Kuruleni recently, the, the, the governing coalition was destabilised and, and thrown out and returned and the DA mayor's back in charge. And the very strong likelihood is that ANC efforts at local level to make a deal with the EFF were scuppered from on high. You said you, you don't. You field your own candidate if you lose and the DA's back in power, that's fine. Because and, and the pragmatic ANC are right. If they hook up with the EFF, it will be a reverse takeover. The EFF will eat them for breakfast, put them on trial for corruption, uh, show trials. Uh, um, uh, they're, they're no match for, for, for that party. So even if the EFF deal does work, it leads to an election defeat on the balance of probabilities five years later. But the sort of sense with which people say to me, well, obviously this is going to be the deal. It's not that obvious. Mm -hmm. It could be very different. And I can can also tell you that that you wouldn't be wrong to believe that the more pragmatic around the ANC are looking for alternative deals at the moment to get to escape the trap of being uh, 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 taken over by their um, former youth league leader. Dr. Franz Cronier, we now need to get from you some sense of 2024. Business tribe who are investors, who are primarily based in South Africa for better or worse, are seeing or looking for hope, looking for a coalition government after 2024 that is business friendly and already taking some bets because if that happens, all of our analysts say this country will rocket. The economy will go up, the share market will go up. We'll have a far better future into the than the ideological yeah, quagmire yeah, yeah. that we've it'll, been in and we'll go into It'll the absolutely rock it. So just, help us. Help I've us. just been on tour with one mm. of the investment banks and they make a great point to their clients that, that, that given what's priced into South Africa at the moment, if the, the, the chap said, even if half of what I suggest may happen, happens, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take off. Right, let's think of some, some deals that work well. Uh, the DA has recovered politically. It's, it's standing pretty strong at the moment. It's policy offerings, broadly pragmatic. 
a deal with the ANC works. Um, the budget of, mini budget of, what, 10 days ago, two weeks ago. In real terms, the minister cuts civil service spending and grant spending, even, even while extending this little COVID grant a little bit. It's an extraordinary thing to do. They're going to lose an election. The right thing to do is to go super populist, double down on the civil service, borrow heavily, huge uh, uh, welfare rollout. Maybe they'll cling to the 50% with the fingernails one more time. They haven't done it. Now, there's this, this is not something that should surprise one. The ANC has a deep conservative fiscal streak that it inherited from Mandela after he was released from prison and said to them, the Nats have screwed up so badly in running the economy that if we do not grow and reform, we will borrow in dollars and it will be the end because that's how, how the end happens. So there's a, and, and 13 years later, after coming to power, the ANC had recorded a budget surplus. And don't forget that the technocrats who brought that about are still around, they're still in the, in the broader universe, and uh, some of them will, will likely make a serious run at um, uh, seizing greater influence over the ANC at this uh, forthcoming leadership congress. So you expect to see a Trevor Manuel there, for instance? No, I don't know who will be there as an individual, uh, but what I think is happening is that the, let's call it the, the technocratic influence that made possible those early economic successes of the ANC uh, are, you wouldn't be wrong to think of the view that Mr. Ramaphosa is crashing our party, our movement and its history. And to, to quote the great, uh, he writes on one of these online things, Simon Lincoln Reader writes on South Africa, uh, one of these online things, he's a business columnist. Oh, is he also a business <laughs> columnist? Oh, he writes on Medium or, or what? Substack. Substack. Yeah. I follow him on Substack. Uh -huh. I don't know who's with you, but that's very good. <laughs> he, he had a wonderful column where he wrote some time back that the way it's going, the ANC is going to be remembered as the Manson family of political parties. <laughs> and and uh, that that is, is... Explain that to the young people. Well, uh, Manson was a, a letter Charlie from the family of serial killers in, 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 in America. Um, some time ago, um, many decades ago. But yes, crazy, yes, crazy yes, people. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, so mm. you, you've got this pragmatic influence around the ANC that's fighting to to mitigate the consequences of... Every, everyone thinks the only opponents to Ramaphosa are the RET kind of crazies. But that's not true. The, the, the pragmatists just as much. The minister's budget, pragmatic under the circumstances. Not a solution, but, but a pretty effective... Uh, uh, mitigation of the consequences of his government's policies. On Eskim, the lights go off, the political damage to the ANC is severe, but Eskim CEO does a few load shedding stages of preemptive preventative maintenance every day. If, if we were really crazed populists, you would put in an Eskim CEO who would run everything at 100% so you've, you've through set, the election. You've set some so, very sensible guidelines. So but the, how do you see, if the election was held today, how do you see the parties post-2024 well, stacking it, up? It, it, if there is a small party that returns the ANC to power, that's not the EFF, they take that now. But if they are, let's say, below 45, then a deal with the bigger parties becomes realistic. The smaller parties have also not been, been quite difficult to manage in the coalitions. And I think the ANC and the DA after 2024 will agree on threshold legislation, so, which means that if you're very small, you don't get, you know, in, in Israel, the recent election, the threshold is 3.25%. If you get less than that, your votes are discarded. You don't go to the Knesset. And this keeps small parties out. It's not anti-democratic because you can tell the small startups, if you really are serious, you can join up in a joint list and you can, you can compete until one of you becomes serious enough to, to go. Something, in, in fact, that Netanyahu used brilliantly uh, to give himself the option of returning to power by getting the, the extreme far-right Israeli fringe parties 
to form a bloc that saw them pass the threshold, and this is why he's now in a position to form a government if he chooses to. So um, the the I, I think the the serious parties have have realised that these startups can be high maintenance, and you give them the power to collapse. You know, if, let's say you're a party with one percent, and you've got the power to collapse a city or a government. You do it because you know it's 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 fine. I mean, you you, you well, well, this is well you're using the power you have. Like you're using Gage a little McKenzie power. If you're a party with thirty percent, collapsing a city like Johannesburg, brings with it very serious long-term consequences from your large numbers of voters who say you're not serious. What's the point of voting for you if you're not going to govern and give cities back to the people that we voted for you for to save us from? So um, I'd say above 45, ANC looks for a deal with a smaller party. Below 45, anything else is is, is possible. And the... The, uh, uh, I've stressed it in this interview, it's not, it's not my only view of what should happen, but, but people shouldn't think that a DA-ANC deal is a thing that can never happen on, on many issues. The, the ANC deep inside, you see the problem, Alec, is people, business particularly, they don't understand the, 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 the zeitgeist of, of political parties of the ANC. The ANC historically has been very wary of what it in its own language calls ultra-leftists. And it says the problem with ultra-leftists is that they're so nuts that they'll destroy the capitalist economy. When in fact, to stay in, 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 in the language of the, of the sort of 1950s, which the purpose of our revolution must be to harness the capitalist economy to serve the agenda of the state, which might be a you know, if you try and be naive, a developmental agenda. But this is this this. So, so the DAEFF uh, get together. I mean, the, the DAASA get together is not it's not not impossible at all. Would probably be the most stable outcome. DAANC. DAANC. Uh, yeah. uh, DAANC get together mm -hmm. is is probably the most stable outcome. And in fact, they they of course they, they many things divide them, but. Um, uh, 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 on on some of the core kind of economic stuff, it's not actually that much. I spoke last week to someone who's quite involved in the previous transition and said, what's your advice? And and I said, it's laid out the ground as we've done here. The ANC's losing, afraid of the EFF deal. The EFF's afraid of the same deal. The DA and the ANC actually have something in common. There are some pragmatic small startups that could could form governments. This is the situation, and 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 these trends are irreversible. The ANC will never get back urban South Africa. It's gone forever. It's lost it completely. You know, in Gauteng, we've got the ANC below 30 percent now. So it shows you how alive the reform movement is in in the country. And this guy said to me, you know, the thing that was very important then was that um, the the Efvia and Mandela and the people around them had sufficient respect for each other as being fundamentally decent people that they could make the deal. And, and he said to me, if you don't have that this time, then it's not the time for the deal. Uh, and and your, your, you know, people say if, it's, if it doesn't happen in 2024, we fall off the edge of the earth, it's the end of the world, we get wiped out forever. I don't, I think we, we are... Pain and suffering continues, but we're we're a very tough society, and we're not going to fall off the edge of the earth if we don't make a deal in 2024. We could then look to 2029. Circumstances remain the same. So you remain optimistic. I remain optimistic. Mm -hmm. We need the 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 missing link at the moment is whether the personal relationships between the people that will have to sign is such that they retain sufficient respect for each other that the deal has the ability of holding. And if we get that now, which is, we don't have at the moment, if we get that now, given the circumstances I've set out for you, um, yeah, I completely, same place I was with you four months ago, the, the reform moment is very close. And if we play it well, the recovery will be very successful. Dr. Franz Cronier from the Social Research Foundation, as R.W. Johnson said last week, edge of the seat stuff. 
We're all interested in politics now. I'm Alec Hogg from biznews.com.